Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and today we're in Psalm 115, beginning in verse 9. We're going through the Bible for the fifth time in the last 38 years. The New Testament is completed in this series, the Old Testament, right up until Psalm 115. And the previous four, along with this series, are all archived at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, and that is found at the thebibleversebyverse.com. So, there's a lot for you to choose from and a lot for you to study. These, these are in-depth, verse-by-verse Bible studies. This is not a survey. This is not a chapter-by-chapter, chapter, a book-by-book, book, or even a paragraph-by-paragraph. Paragraph. It's much more detailed than that. It is a verse-by-verse verse study. And it's found at the thebibleversebyverse.com, where all you have to do is choose, click, and listen. On All you need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word again to the thebibleversebyverse.com. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth, in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 115, verse 9, O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. God is not the help and the shield of everyone. God is only the help and the shield of those who fear him. I remember talking to a man whose wife lived a wicked life, and actually so did he. And she was getting older, and she started to get scared about dying and standing before God. And he said, don't be afraid of God. The Lord is here to forgive, not to condemn. Spoken like an unsaved and penitent sinner who believes in a grandfatherly type God who has no standards. But God is not the help and the shield of everyone. Only those who fear him. Fear him enough to repent. God is a shield to those who choose to take refuge in him, but God is also a gentleman so he doesn't force himself on anyone. It's up to that woman whether she's going to repent or not. It's up to that man, although he's dead now, so I don't know if he did or not. But God would love to protect all people for all eternity. He wants you to be saved more than you want to be saved, if you can believe that. But he will not protect unless he is asked. He waits to be invited. He doesn't save anyone by force. If you want to live in your sin, continue on the way you're going, well, that's totally up to you. Totally up to you, but you're going to go to hell if that's the case. God is waiting to be invited into your life. If you don't want him, he'll let you go your own way. But if you want him, then repent of your sin. Ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, mean business, and he'll save you from hell. 12. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. So he's telling, he's telling this, talking, or saying this to people who are probably going through some very hard times. And he's reminded them that God will bless them. When God, for whatever reason, known only to him, allows trouble in your life, don't buy the lie that Satan may tell you, which is that God doesn't care about you or God has forgotten you. God's past goodness proves that we are important to him and that he will bless again if we belong to Jesus Christ, and if we repent of our sins. He's just waiting for us to do that. You know, the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth, 
looking for someone that he can show himself strong toward. They're hard to find. Because there's too much rebellion in the world today, even among professing Christians. 13, he will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. God will bless both small and great. It's one thing I love about God. He'll bless them that fear the Lord. The important thing is, do you fear the Lord? Because that's who he's going to bless. God does not favor the, the rich over the poor or the young over the old over the, or the poor over the rich for that matter. Because we're all the same to God. Meaning that we are all the work of his hands. The thing that God looks for is that we be good. That's what he's looking for. Are we good? Do we fear him? Do we show that we fear him? By how we live, by confession and repentance of our sin when we fail him. Do we show that we fear him by living for him? By starting over, confessing when we fail. Repenting when we fail, because we all fail. But if you fear God, you're going to repent and confess and get back on track, you see. 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Ye are blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. We are blessed by the God who made heaven and earth. Those who think that since God, the God who made heaven and earth, has done big things like making heaven and earth, those who think that somebody that big would never lower himself to care about people and bless people, be involved in the lives of people, they don't know God. Not very well. Not at all, actually. He is a huge God, that's true. He is infinitely complicated and holy and a powerful God beyond our ability to even imagine. He did make all the heavens and he did make all the earth and he keeps it all going. He keeps it all in place. Yet don't think that he doesn't notice you because he does. And he cares about each one of us. God cares about everything. Nothing is insignificant to God. The Bible says that he knows when a sparrow falls to the ground. He knows the number of hairs on your head, the Bible says. So yeah, he's keeping track of the entire universe, but he's also keeping track of how many hairs you have on your head. Can't fathom God, can you? No one can. 16, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. The heavens are ruled by God, and he has delegated the rule of the earth to people. That's why things don't operate as well here as they do in heaven. This thing's being run by man. Heaven's being run by God. That's the reason why there is greater happiness in heaven than there is anywhere on earth. It's the reason why Jesus instructed us to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 17. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth. And forevermore, praise the Lord. Since the dead praise not the Lord, well, that means they don't teach either. None of us are going to be singing songs to God from our coffin. So what we are going to do for God 
in this world. We got to do it right now. While we are here, while we have the time to do it, the opportunity to do it. <clears throat> Psalm 116, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. The writer loves God because God heard his prayers. A good reason to love God is that he hears our prayers. And he answers our prayers. When we show our love to God by keeping his commandments, and remember, confessing when we fail, that's a good way to show God that we love him because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Then it make you sick when you sin against God. I know we all have a free will. All of us Christians have a free will too. And when we sin, it's because we choose to sin. There's no excuses. There's no reason other than we choose to sin. That's the only thing that matters. It's the only thing that God cares about is that we recognize that we choose to sin and confess when we fail. But doesn't it make you sick? If you're a Christian, you will answer, yes, it does. I can't stand that about me. Two, because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Prayer's worth doing because it gets through to God and because God listens to our prayers. The writer says, if God is listening, then I'm going to pray. You'd be crazy not to. You got the ear of the eternal God of the entire universe and you say, I'm not going to pray? Are you? Why not? If God is listening, I'm going to pray, he says. If God takes the time to incline his ear to us, then we ought to take the time to pray because he is saying that he will hear us. The only thing that stands in the way of a Christian's prayer being heard is if that Christian has unconfessed sins in their life. So get rid of those sins, get back, track on, on, back on track with God, and he'll hear your prayers. Study all of God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse and Coffee Break, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's word. And you can do that right now while you're thinking about it. I think that'd be a good idea. And also, when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also makes you a part of this ministry. Let's get out God's holy word together while we can. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.